Hey folks, we are about to do one of our pack t tests. Uh, today I'm going to be using my H&K VP9 9mm pistol and I'm going to be shooting Underwood ammo 70 grain hero rounds. Now this is Underwood ammo. The bullet is made by Lehigh. These rounds are supposed to achieve 1650 feet per second. We're going to be able to determine if that is in, case, uh, in fact the case with this particular pistol on today's uh, scenario by using that lab radar chronograph. Now, the Pack T test is all about precision, accuracy, consistency, and the T part is terminal performance. So our, our precision will be measured on a bullseye target set at 15 yards from this bench right over here. I will be measuring extreme spread. Accuracy is again off of that same bullseye target and I'm going to be scoring it. Consistency comes from the lab radar chronograph and that will be really determined by the standard deviation of those muzzle velocities. It shows our good consistency but I'm also really interested if we really do achieve 1,600 feet per second. Right around there would be really fantastic to see that. The last part of that test, the terminal performance, is where I'm going to be putting one round of this hero ammunition into clear ballistic ballistic gelatin from seven yards. Now I'm going to be putting all of these bullets that we're going to do this year through a little bit more difficult test and they are going to have to pass through some canvas. Okay, so I've got some canvas that the rounds are going to have to go through two layers of canvas and then into the 20% NATO block of clear ballistic gelatin. We're going to see how they do. Now I'm doing that because a bullet can look just fantastic when it goes into bare gel, but we're seeing that an awful lot of these bullets are clogging if they go through even some pretty simple material. In fact, Last year, I noted, gee, I'm, I can clog these bullets by going through uh, a little bit of cardboard, it seems. So we're going to see if this hero round uh, actually does expand inside that ballistic gelatin. So we're going to go ahead and get started, have a little fun with this today, and uh, don't forget to stick around after all that because we're going to be looking into the results really closely. I'm curious if the velocities are too fast for this handgun setting. So we're going to make an adjustment here. I'm going to change this to a rifle. Absolutely. 1,761. These rounds are going faster uh, than what the lab radar system is um, programmed to handle at the, what they call the velocity range for handguns. So switching it to rifles uh, fixed that problem. Wow, they're really going. And we're clear. Really looks like some excellent consistency here. I'm going to disarm it. Yeah, well now again, of course, we only recorded three of those rounds. 12.5 feet per second standard deviation, but our average was 1775. This is the 70 grain Underwood ammo hero rounds. All right, let's go put one, one more, into the clear ballistic gelatin from seven yards. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now this first round that you're seeing, that's a 45 ACP that I shot previously. Uh, you can watch that video uh, on our Pack T series. That is a 200 grain Sierra V Crown or Sig Sauer V Crown. But the one we just shot, this one right here, you saw that happen. That's the 70 grain Hero. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on it. That has a nice penetration of, well, approximately maybe eight and a half inches. Looks like it did mushroom out pretty nicely after going through that um, clothing. We'll extract that bullet, weigh it to see how much weight it retained, get a good measurement on the expansion and an accurate measurement on the penetration, and actually score this bullet and compare it against others that I've shot in the 9mm and 45. Let's run through the results for this Underwood Ammo 70 grain Hero bullet. Now the bullet is made by Lehigh, the factory ammunition is made by Underwood Ammo. Starting off by looking at the pack part of our test, that's precision, uh, we'll start right there, pretty darn good. This was shot at 15 yards off the bench, but we have a 0 0.75 inch 5 shot group. Bullseye score, you know, we really would like to see these things all right here. This gun, this um, H&K VP9, with that optic on it, was not zeroed for this particular load. So, in all likelihood, I could pull this right down here and it would have scored much better as a bullseye score. But as it is, it scored 40 points out of a possible 50, and obvi uh, obviously none in the X-ring. The consistency of this round was pretty darn good. We saw 12.5 feet per second of standard deviation and a tremendous muzzle velocity of 1,775 feet per second um, for this little 70 grain bullet. For the terminal performance, we looked at a couple of different things here. Number one is the penetration, that is 8.5 inches into that 20% NATO gel block after the bullet passed through two layers of that uh, canvas. 100% of its weight was retained, all 70 grains. Retained length of 0 0.259 inch. That's not too bad. It did flatten a fair amount, uh, but an expansion of 177%. Didn't quite double in size, but still did a pretty decent job. The overall score for this um, round was 372.5 points. That's okay. There are quite a number of different 9mm bullets that have scored better in our pack t tests. And you know, going into this test, I had a couple of things I was thinking was go were going to happen. One of those things that I thought might happen, or probably going to happen, is um, we won't get the velocity that's advertised. So often on a box of ammunition, this one says 1,650 feet per second uh, at the muzzle, and so often we don't see that. We see 100 feet per second less or something like this. But this is incredible. 1,775 feet per second average after five shots that's tremendous. This little bullet is really going. You know, and that makes me think about comparisons with the 5.7 and some of those other very small calibers uh, that are just driving those bullets very, very quickly. You know, I looked up some of that information, in fact. Uh, the the 5.7, uh, number one, is not available in something as heavy as a 70 grain bullet, uh, but um, the their lighter bullets are moving along at this speed and actually a little bit more, a little bit over 2,000 feet per second. But uh, that's a 40 grain bullet that's doing that, that FN offers, um, but nothing like this. So that's kind of interesting to me. You hear a lot of talk about those uh, 4.6 and 5.7 uh, calibers and um, uh, some of the advantages of those sorts of calibers, but then we look at this and uh, it kind of comes close to that same range and maybe uh, providing those same qualities. 
although this is a purely pistol bullet that's in there, quite a bit different than what we see in the 5.7 and the 4.6. But anyway, uh, let's look a little bit more closely at the terminal performance. What we're looking at here is the maximum temporary wound channel. We also call that the transient cavitation channel. Um, the maximum that I caught on video. What we're seeing is a pretty decent uh, temporary wound channel, that ballooning effect. But of course, since this bullet only penetrated about halfway through the gel block, all of that energy was dumped in that first eight inches of the gel block. That's okay, it's not terrible, and of course this bullet did not clog going through that canvas. And that of course relates to the other idea that I had before even shooting this bullet into the ballistic gelatin, and that is that it would not penetrate very far or very deep into the gelatin. It's kind of just what we expect. You've got a light bullet um, coming out of a, a pistol, and uh, the pistol design type of, uh, of bullet in the first place, uh, those tend not to penetrate very, very deeply. So eight and a half inches, eh, kind of what I expected, thinking maybe we'd get nine, maybe ten. I uh, wasn't really thinking we would get uh, anything deeper than that. But, uh, you know, that, that bore out, and uh, we saw that in the results inside that ballistic gelatin. Now, seeing those velocities, 1,775 feet per second. Saw it right there on my chronograph. That made me start to think, I wonder how much muzzle rise we're going to be getting out of this round. Uh, how snappy is it going to feel when we're shooting it offhand, standing? So, went out back out to the range, a little bit warmer day, and, uh, and I shot another test. And here's what I did. I took five rounds of the same hero uh, round, and I took five rounds of what I'm accustomed to shooting 124 grain Hornady XTP jacketed hollow point. I mounted the uh, Mantis X10 on my uh, HK VP9, and I put it into the recoil meter mode, and then I set a target seven yards away from me, and what I was wanting to do, what I needed to do, was um, fire those five rounds into that target, um, and I had to keep my rounds in the, the relatively large torso bullseye area. And I'm looking at the total amount of time I spent firing those five rounds. What is the average muzzle rise? What is the average recovery time? So I shot this little test, and I also had my son shoot this test with his Sig Sauer P320. And what we saw is there's not much difference between these two. In fact, we were both slightly faster, just a hair faster, with the Hero round than with the 124 grain. The 144, uh, 124 grain bullets that we've tested previously, very, very different in that ballistic gelatin. But anyway, the Hero round, bottom line on the Hero, you know, it's not bad. I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing, especially with the velocity that this factory ammo is achieving. Um, you know, it's one of those things that it shot pretty well, but terminally, the, what we saw in the ballistic gelatin was okay, but it could have been a whole lot better. i uh, like to see a little bit more penetration out of those bullets. Uh, we didn't quite see that with the Hero round. So we've got some more Pack t tests coming up. Another one that we're going to be doing that I think is going to be really exciting to check out is the 115 grain 9mm from Corbon. You won't want to miss that one. Thanks for watching.